Hey there, welcome back. So today we're going to be adding these concrete spaces that act similar to the icing tiles in Candy Crush where um, we can't move in and out of them. They essentially just kind of block stuff. If I make a match around them, the stuff will fall down around it. And if I make a match in one of the four cardinal directions next to it, that'll get rid of the space. So that's what we're adding today. Uh, thank you very much for joining and let's dive in. Hey there, so where we left off last time, we have our board here. Uh, we have a couple different kinds of special tiles right now. We have tiles that act like the jelly tiles where you can still move underneath them. And if you make a match underneath it, it makes the tile go away. We have tiles that act similar to the uh, licorice tiles where you cannot move underneath them. But if you make a match under it, it goes away and then you can move again. So today what we're going to be adding are tiles that are similar to the concrete tiles. So or sorry, tiles that are similar to the icing tiles. I call them concrete. Uh, okay, so let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to do, just like last time, is I want to make a new inherited scene. Um, so I'm going to go to scene, new inherited scene, and I'm going to inherit from the ice. Uh, I'm going to rename this to concrete. And then I'll change the sprite. And I can leave the script the same because all this script, oops, yeah, there we go. I can leave the script the same because all this script really does is keep um, a variable for what the health is and then take damage. And then everything else is taken care of by the object that holds it. So uh, let's make sure the health is set to one and then let's save this scene concrete and we'll save it up. Okay, next we're going to go into our game window. We're going to create another uh, node 2D to hold the concrete pieces. So I'm just going to make a new node 2D. I'm going to, oops, didn't want to make it a child of that. I'm going to make it uh, a sibling of the lock holder, but make sure it's underneath the grid. This one doesn't have to be underneath the grid, but it's not a bad idea. So I'll call this concrete holder. And now I'm going to open up my uh, my grid script. And so let's take a look at this. So similar to what we did for the ice and the licorice, I'm going to make a new pool vector two array. So export pool vector two array. I'm going to call this concrete spaces. And I'll make two new signals, one for making the concrete and one for damaging the concrete. So signal make concrete and signal damage concrete. Um, all right, cool. And then I'm going to need to make a spawn concrete method here. So I'll do function spawn concrete. And same thing I do for the ice and the locks. I'll go through everything that's in that array and then emit a signal to create something at that spot. So for i in concrete spaces dot size, emit signal, make concrete, and I'll pass in the argument of concrete spaces i. Now, uh, the concrete is also going to restrict filling. Uh, just like the blank spaces do. So for my uh, restricted fill, I'm going to add a check to see if it's in the concrete spaces as well. So in the restricted fill method, if is in array, concrete spaces, place, return true. Uh, and we don't have to code anything other than that because of this flexible system that we've created. Um, all right, and then I will spawn concrete. Now, if I go out of distraction free mode here, take a look at my grid, and then scroll down to look at my concrete spaces, I'm going to add four of these, and my indices for it, I'll do three, one, uh, four, one, we'll do... 
three, eight. And last but not least, I'll do four, eight. Now, if I run my scene, I'm not going to see any concrete spaces, but I should see empty spaces. And there we go. So now I just have to have my concrete holder make the concrete in those places. So to do that, I'm going to move over to script here. It's going to grab the lock holder script, the last one we made. And I'm going to grab all of this, copy that, and I'm going to make a new script for my concrete holder. Um, if I was thinking, I totally could have done this using inheritance, but I wasn't thinking when I built this, so um, this isn't super bad to do it this way. Uh, okay, so we're going to make a new script called concrete holder. I'm saving it in my scripts file. Uh, I'll save that out. And then I will paste over all of that. Um, everywhere I see the lock, I'm going to change that to concrete. So lock pieces, lock pieces, concrete. And this is going to be concrete. And the scene I'm replacing it with is concrete. Don't have to change that. But I am going to find lock pieces, and I'm going to replace it with concrete pieces. And I will copy this, and I'll paste it everywhere else I see lock pieces. Okay, doing it this way. Um, it's going to be not only more efficient, but also more accurate than just requiring me to uh, remember. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, and now we don't need a signal. No, no, we do need a signal because we need to tell the board that this is no longer a restricted fill place. So the signal is remove concrete, and we're going to remove concrete instead of remove lock. Uh, okay, so let's go over this really fast. Uh, let's save it too. All right, so remove concrete, concrete pieces with height. Concrete is what concrete is. Uh, this is going to be on grid make concrete and on grid damage concrete. All right. And two concrete pieces. Okay, this looks okay. So now I'm going to take a look at my grid. And I'm going to connect that signal, uh, make concrete, to the concrete holder. Connect. And then I'm going to connect damage concrete to the concrete holder. Connect. Um, okay, cool. So now if I hit play, should see the concrete show up. Ooh, there we go. One more thing I forgot to change. Uh, okay, so let's try that again. Cool. So now uh, I can't swipe in or out of there because as far as the grid is concerned, this is just a null space. The functionality I want to have is if I make a match near a concrete piece, I want to damage the concrete pieces that are in the four cardinal directions around every piece that's matched. And right now that's not happening. So I'm generating the pieces just fine, but I don't have any actual functionality with them. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Now we already have the method in the concrete piece to damage it, but we need to know which pieces we're damaging. So to do that, we're going to go to the grid space here, and I'm going to make a new method, uh, which is going to uh, check to see where a piece is, and then damage in four directions if it needs to. So, my new function here is going to be called, uh, we'll not call it damage concrete, we'll call it check concrete. And this is going to need a column and a row as an argument. So, the logic here is uh, we're going to check right. 
So in order to check right, we have to make sure that the column we're in is less than 1 minus the width. So if column is less than width minus 1, then in here we'll emit the signal to damage it. So we'll emit signal uh, damage concrete and we'll emit the signal at vector 2 column plus 1 row because we'll be able to damage the piece that's to the right of us. If we're not in the right spot, and so for example, if we're in a column that is at the very edge of the board, we can't damage anything to the right, so we shouldn't emit a signal for it, even though I'm pretty sure... Yeah, and that would cause a, a reference error because we'd be out of range. Um, okay, so next thing we want to do is let's check left. So if column is greater than zero, then we're going to, let's just grab this line here because I'm going to be rewriting that a bunch. And instead of being column plus one, this is going to be column minus one. And then we're going to have to check up and down. So check up. So if row is less than height minus one, only this time it's going to be column and then row plus one. And then we'll check down. So if row is greater than zero, we'll emit that signal, but we'll do column and then row minus one. Cool. And then I can get rid of this pass now. And in my damage special, instead of emitting the signal, I'm going to use that function. So I'm going to call check concrete and pass in column row as my argument. All right, so this should be fine. Let's make sure. OK. So everything generated, <laughs> that's always a good sign. Uh, all right, cool. I'm gonna have to play a minute here to get a match near the concrete. So bear with me for just a second. I think that was a deadlock, which we'll, we'll cover soon enough, deadlock conditions, but wow, I think that's the first time that's happened while we've been testing this. Okay, cool. So there we go. So the concrete piece was removed. Um, let's just you know, make sure that it's going to be removed again if I play around a little bit more. OK, but as far as the um, grid is concerned, this is still something that should remain null. So what I have to do now is emit that signal from the concrete holder back to the grid to remove that piece from the grid. And to remove that piece from the grid, Let's actually um, make this a little simpler, too. So I have a function to uh, check to see if something is in an array. Let's make a function to remove something from an array, because this is something I'm going to have to do a few more times. So we're going to do function remove from array. I'm going to pass in which array I want to use and the item I want to remove from the array. And then the actual logic for that is going to come from our remove lock here. So I'm going to grab, just copy that from there. And then let's go back up to, did I put it? Yeah, right there. Remove from array. So I'll paste that there. Um, get rid of this pass. And then instead of this being lock spaces dot size, we'll make this array dot size. And instead of lock spaces i, we'll make this array. And instead of place, it's going to be item. And then instead of lock spaces, it's array dot remove. 
Okay. And now, down at the bottom of my script, remove lock, instead of using this whole piece here, which I'm going to have to use again for removing stuff from concrete, I'm just going to call, uh, oops, just make sure that I'm doing the right one. Okay, it's a place. So we're going to do remove from array. Um, we want to do lock spaces and place. And then we don't need this anymore. Cool. Now I can make that signal connection. Let me save all my scenes between the concrete holder and the grid. So I'll remove concrete. I'll connect that to the grid. And then here, I just need to remove from array. Remove from array. Concrete spaces place where place is the argument that's being sent in. Um, okay, I feel like I'm doing this really, really fast, but that's because this is like the third episode that has almost the same code functionality, just a few small changes for each of them. So if I'm going too fast, apologies. Nope. Okay, so it didn't remove that piece. So let's take a look. Remove concrete from board position. So we queued it free. Hmm. Why was it not removing the concrete? Remove from array concrete spaces place. Okay. Just one second. Okay. So here's what the issue is. Um, apparently my remove from array function doesn't work. And I'm honestly not sure at all why it doesn't work. So if any of you out there know more about GDScript or Python than I do, and would know why the same code that I'm calling from a function works in here if I'm not calling it from a function. So essentially what I did is I just went back to what I had. So the unlock holder remove lock, I never actually checked it to make sure that it worked when I called that function remove from array. It doesn't. Um, which is really weird for me, um, but if I put it back in here, it works now. And the same thing's going to work for the concrete. If I just do for I in range, concrete spaces dot size minus one to negative one, decrementing by negative one. If concrete spaces i is equal to place, then concrete spaces dot remove i. So if I do it this way, without using that, that function, um, it's going to work just fine, which is really strange to me. See? There we go. Um, so I'm honestly not sure why that is. Like I said, if any of you out there know more about Python or GD script than I do, which honestly isn't that hard. Um, if you could sound off in the comments and let me know, uh, that would be super. Um, but there we go. So we've got our uh, concrete spaces that go away. Our liquor spaces, or our locks are still working like they were. We still get the functionality back once we delete the spot or that piece from that spot. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, if you would like to know when I post new videos, you can follow me on, um, or sorry, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. And yeah, like I said, if you know why that function, that remove from array, wasn't working when I made it as a function call, but it works if I put it inside the signal call. It's not a race condition because if you keep playing the game, it still doesn't refill. So I'm really unsure. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Well, uh, have yourselves a wonderful day.